Everybody pay attention to me, the Raw Street Blockchain, Raw TV. Stories from behind the scene, information you can use like a thinking machine. Uh. All right, my name is Joseph Wooten, a.k.a. The Hands of Soul, and I love... I love Jay Ross TV. What's up, y'all? This your boy Jay Ross hanging out with my number one cat in St. Louis, Joseph Wooten, y'all. Hey, Joe, man. I just got to get right to something, man, because oh, it's been on my mind with you, man. You, baby, you know, now you are you are a single man. You out on the road with Steve Miller Band. You're in St. Louis. Well, I'm, I'm not married. I don't know if, you know. Well, you ain't married. I got. If that makes me single, I'm single. Well, you ain't single. I'm single, but I ain't available. <laughs> yeah. How about that? <laughs> hey, Joe, now, now uh, being on the road, how hard is it to be, you know, being single? So to speak? Well, not single. You got a woman. You know what I mean, though. I do. It's, it, that part of it has never been hard for me. Oh, you a player? Got it like that? No, I'm not. I'm not a player. That's that's the part that made it easy. Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not a player. Uh, you know, I go out to play music, and that's pretty much what I'm out there for. Yeah. You know, so... That now, part of it was always easy to me. Now the new girl you dating, Miss Stephanie, real cool, man. Yeah. Is she she just happened to be white. Yeah, she does. Now, what, what? How is it, you know, for a black man dating a white woman, so to speak, on uh -huh. tour? Especially when y'all go to South. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's it's easier than it used to be because uh, it's not as uncommon as it used to be. And uh, but we talking about in the South, Joe, with the <laughs> rebel flag well, I and. Haven't, I haven't had a problem with it yet in the South. I've been I've been one of the fortunate ones. I'm one of the fortunate black folks that hasn't had a bad a bad police experience. I know a lot of people do. I've been one of the fortunate ones. Um, but I, but this is what this is how I feel about the whole interracial relationship thing. Relationships are relationships, and people fall in love with who they fall in love with. You can't really control that part of it. But I think I think that with everything social. It's important for us to understand the dynamics. Yeah. But I've seen, uh, I've seen some uh, white women before. They go, yeah, I don't understand why the black women are looking at me that way. And I think it's under, I think it's important for white women to understand the dynamic. Right. There's black women, a lot of black women that want black men, and the black men aren't available. And from where they sit, it looks like the black men are running the white women. Even if you, even if that's not the case, that's not the case with me. But if I see a black woman that feels that way. I think it's important for me to understand where she's coming from. It's important for me not to discard somebody else's experience. I think with anything social, it's important for us uh, to understand the dynamics and the rules. So, so like, all right, you, you and Stephanie, y'all out, you dinner, whatever, uh -huh. and the black women checking you out, looking at you twisted. You don't, you don't kind of like feel a little bit insecure or whatnot. I don't feel insecure. I don't feel insecure. Because I can't control what somebody else does, and I, I pretty much know who I am. Right. My, my, my parents gave me that. That's right. I know who I am, and it's not really dependent on how somebody else feels about it. But music, like everything else, is a matter of fitting in with everybody as best you can. So I think my part of it is, if at all possible, to understand where they're coming from, even if I don't necessarily agree with it. Yeah. I understand where they're coming from. Black women want black men, like, like a lot of ethnicities want the men of their ethnicity. And there is a dynamic within the black community, oftentimes, where it looks like where a black man gets successful and he runs away from his community. Yeah. That's not what I did, but if somebody feels that I did it that way, I understand where they're coming from. So I never, I don't like to really look down on black women or anybody for, for anything. Yeah. Because uh, pretty much in this society where, where black people have kept, come from, black women oftentimes are the ones that were left holding the bag. So, you know, so I, I understand. I understand. Uh, I understand their discomfort. So, what about like Thanksgiving dinner, man? Forty people at the table. You're the only black man. Well, I mean, I don't have any problems with that. I've never had a problem uh, getting along with people. Like I just uh, sat down with Stephanie's family yesterday. They were great. Yeah. Sat down. We talked about baseball. We talked about sports. We talked about the Confederate flag down south. We talked about everything. And, oh yeah. Uh, I think it's important for people to learn how to to, uh, to coincide. With everyone, I mean these these issues that seem like black issues or it seems like this, they're, they're American issues, yeah. and there has to be some kind of way for us to wind up talking about it before the incident, right? Because if we if we can if we can get past these if we can get past these issues before there's an incident, then when there's an incident, we're not fighting about it, right? right? 
I tell you one thing, we in St. Louis, it's hot as a mug out here. Boy, somebody got that furnace turning up on Satan. I'm, 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 um, I'm happy to see the summer come because we've been traveling and everywhere we've been, it's either been cold or either it's been rainy. Yeah. I mean, it, just a little over the half of the tour is uh, going. And uh, we've already had three dates move for rain, so All right. I'm, you know, it's it's hot out here, but I'm happy to see the summer. All right, well, I want to invite Miss Stephanie in, just kind of get her <laughs> input on it. Joe, you, Joe looked like I scared the hell out of him when no, I said that. No, in. no, 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 no. And then he went and got a woman taller than him too, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miss Stephanie, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, now good? just I'm gonna get right to it because I know it's hot and a sap sucker. Uh, being a, 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 a Caucasian woman dating a black man. Uh, how how did you how was that like you bring it to your family when they first saw Joe be like uh oh <laughs> no you know it was funny with my family um, I'm in business and so when we started dating they were more on what kind of person was he and they were like you're dating a musician and that was so, it though. yeah that was their thing <laughs> you're dating a musician and they wanted to know all about him so I think the day that I told my parents I was seeing him. They live about three hours away. They zoomed down pretty quick so that they could then um, come and meet him. So they were all about what kind of person he was. But what about what about your friends, though? Yeah, it's the same thing, you know. Well, all your friends happy. can't be that cool, though. No, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, I've been very fortunate. I think, you know, I um, I've been very successful in business, and so you know, we had a lot of diversity and everything like that. So I think people were more on. You know what was he about and what i saw in him and, and what they thought um he thought about me yeah and so it was more um from that perspective so we've been very fortunate you know i, I have a friend that uh, i have a very very uh conservative friend that lives in memphis and uh, we have gone back and forth you know online about some different issues but one thing that we when when i first met him online I told him, I said, we could easily just fight. I said, but let's try to learn something from each other. Uh -huh. So we went back and forth pretty hard on some stuff, but we always respect each other. And when we met each other uh, the first time in Memphis, I was a little bit nervous because I was like, what's going to happen when we see each other in person? And when we got together, and I hope that we're a good example of how it could be. When we got together, we never talked about politics and our differences. We got together with both music lovers. We talked about music. We talked about our parents. We talked about our animals, we talked about instruments, we talked about our friendship. So most of what... Mo so, so, so in other words, y'all skipped around the core. No, no, we didn't... We didn't <laughs> no. Yeah, you skipped around the core of the problem, Joe. No, what really happened was, is that when we got together, we found out there were some things that were more important than our differences. So we got together and realized that our love for our parents was, you know, we, we just, it wasn't like we were trying to skip around anything. We just never got to it because we had more things in common then we had separate. So the same person were online and somebody, uh, one of his friends, called him a racist for hanging with me. Uh -huh. And because we are we are close, even though we differ on a lot of things, we like each other. And he and he told his friends, he said, he said, Joseph is my brother. He said, this is my friend. He said, if you don't like it, you can kiss both our black and white. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, and that's what, you know, so in, in my opinion, that's a great example of what can happen if we go ahead and have the honest conversation about our differences because really we're not that, we're not that far apart. We're not that far apart. It seems like we're farther apart because we don't talk about it. Yeah, well, y'all didn't talk about it either though, Joe. But yeah, Y'all danced no, around no, it, man. You know what? No, no, Wait a minute, so the core belief though is the man don't like you because you black. No, 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 no that, that wasn't, the, the thing was, the, really what happened was, we had some differences on some issues, but we really liked each other. Well, what was the issues? What was the main issue, so we can do? Uh, when we, when I had a song called Racism. Yeah. And my song Racism starts out racism, the color of your faces, and to put you in your places, and to spray you with the maces. Oh, let's too far. German Shepherd chases, and planet dna and take a beat down if you gay-cism. You know, uh, Islamophobic Asalama Lacism, and then it ends with, we're still a country call it USA system. Now he had a problem with that. From he was he's a southern white man from Memphis. Right? He he didn't have he did not have the opportunity of how I grew up. So he told it from where he sat and he felt like that was a very racially biased thing to say and it bothered him. Yeah. So we went back and forth on that issue and a bunch of issues. There ain't no issue that me and this cat have been bumped heads on. Right, but right. What happened was when we met each other when we met each other, we found out that we liked each other. 
and we had more in common than just our differences. Right. There was no reason to sit down across the table and just keep beating us, beating each other up around the differences. Because the things where we were similar meant more. We both loved our parents. That means more than we both love music. That means more than what separates us. We, when Once we got together, it wasn't like we tried to skip issues. Yeah. We got together and we enjoyed our, we, we enjoyed, uh, we enjoyed our humanity more than we, more than we embraced our differences. All right, y'all. That's Joe Wooten. That's my cat, y'all. He in St. Louis with the Steve right. Miller band. Oh, because I don't agree with that, but I ain't going to argue with it. It's too hot. No, tell, tell me what you do. No, 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 no. Next time you in town, we'll argue right, when, in the winter or something. Okay. <laughs> but it's cool. It's hot, it's hot in the 38 out here, boy. So, so let, I mean, let, let me, I'll, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap it up and say I think that the two of us were a good example of the fact that you take most of these cultures, or if we're talking about black and white, we take black and white. We want more of the same things than we have differences. Now we we focus on our differences too often. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We focus on our differences too often. But we want a lot of the same. We want our kids to do better. Right. We want our kids to do have good grades. We want them not to be judged. Right, Joe. But that's man. That's the, yeah. But that's like a lot of liberal BS, man. That's cool. And then you're right. We do want that, yes. man. But it ain't got nothing to do with what I'm trying to get to. Tell me what you're It's too to hot for that, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on with me. Hey, y'all. We in front of the Schaefer's Arena. I got my boy Rick Lear with me. We getting ready to make a run. And the concert's starting a couple hours. But it's hot in the mug in yes, St. It Louis. It got it's to be hot. 98. And we standing outside against a brick wall. And, and, and Steph getting a tan like a mug <laughs> real quick. You know. But, yeah, so. I'm gonna let you roll, Joe, because we, we ain't gonna get to the bottom of this one on this trip. Okay. Next time you in the loo, man, we got to go to Cracker Barrel or something and <laughs> argue it out because I see you don't want to talk with Stephanie well, around. No, that ain't true. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's wound is all about talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, hey, I was born, I got the same birthday as the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment, so I ain't afraid to speak. I'm yeah. Born. I figure I'm a man born to speak his mind. So, so wait a minute, so Stephanie, you growing up in Indiana. I did, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so you, not your parents, but your friends or the neighborhood or whatever never put into you being white, the master race and all that. So how did you fight all that growing up? Not saying you had it in you, but how did, would a person get rid of all that and be open-minded toward an uh, inter interracial uh, couple? You know what I'm saying? You know, it's funny because I don't, I don't think I ever stepped back and said we were an interracial couple. I think I was more on who he was. But you're interracial, Stephanie. Come on. We are. Guys. We absolutely are. Um, but I, I think we're, we're very fortunate that, you know, people are happy for us um, because we, you know, love each other and get along. Is it real happy so, or fake happy? No, oh, no. You know very what? Happy. I'm just asking, man. Class. You know the funniest thing is on yeah. both our Facebooks, people will say, "I've never seen you two so happy. I've never seen a smile like that." He's, they say that to him all the time. So, so no, I think people are sincerely happy for us. So, I think Joe was a little bit happier when they let me play with them at Mississippi Nights that one. Yeah, <laughs> no, so. no. no, I will say yeah. this. I will say this about her parents. Uh, I met her parents. And, uh, you know, uh, I had just come back from Buffalo, New York, and I was working with young people up there. And I was talking about the things that I try to instill in them about, you know, integrity and working hard and, and the things like my mother said, when you look in the mirror in the morning, you know, you've seen the most important person you're gonna see that right. day, but you're oh, better yeah. than anybody else. And those things, and her mother was, she was more impressed by that stuff, the racial part of it, the racial part of it didn't come up. Now I find out later that that she had a relative uh -huh. that had a racial issue, and she had to put the relative into place because of how she feels about me. Right? Yeah. Her mother genuinely, genuinely likes who I am, and I think the danger is, I think the danger is, we need to we need to talk about our differences when we have them. When we have them, they need to be on the table. But when we get past them. We don't need to keep making them an issue when they're not. Yeah. Because most of my friends, are, most of my friends are happy that I'm happy, and and I got friends, I got I got people that we differ on a lot of things, and when we do, I think one of the things that, that I like to think that I have a skill of is talking about things that we don't agree on. Yeah. Right. But you know, at least getting you to and getting me to. I'll see your point of view even if I don't agree with it. Right. And so long as you see my point of view even though we don't agree with right. it. Right. And then from there, 
the question, I think the question that's always more important is, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here is more important than who's right or who's wrong. White castles, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, I'm going to let you run. It's hot. Right. I can't tell if Joe sweating because of the, the questions uh, or it's just hot in the loo. Questions don't But I'm going to let him roll. Y'all, this your boy J. Ross hanging in St. Louis at the Shafers with my cat Joe Wooten for the Steve Miller Band, his girl Steph, my new friend, and we're going to let them bounce. J. Ross Thank TV. You. We 10 million. That's TV. right. We 10 million strong. We gone. Peace. Hey. Everybody pay attention to me, the Ross Report, J. Ross TV. Stories from behind the scenes, information you can use like a thinking machine. Uh.